Do you remember the credit crunch? It was a collapse in credit, which comes from credo, the Latin for belief. Financial credit is just belief, or trust, that people will pay back what they owe. When the belief breaks down, so does the system. This happened because people began defaulting on the subprime mortgages that had been aggressively sold to them. Technically, it was actually the people, not the loans, who were defined as subprime by the banks. It was a delicate way to describe people they didn't think were completely reliable. They were almost prime, nearly perfect. And then the credit crunch happened, and the banks needed to be bailed out. Normally, what you bail out is a leaky boat. But periodically removing the water from a leaking vessel doesn't actually solve the underlying problem. Once you're in dock, you need to fix the hole. These leaky banks, it was said, were too big to fail. In one ordinary sense of the word fail, which is the opposite of succeed, the banks had failed. That's why they were hemorrhaging cash and letting in bilge water. But they were too big to fail in the sense of being allowed to fall apart under the repulsive force of their own incompetence. If a bank is too big to fail, what about a country? The financial crisis was followed by the terrifyingly named Euro Crisis, as though the continent were about to explode into war. The Euro Zone had for a time been a demilitarized zone of happy financial experimentation. But now some nations were in danger of falling out of it entirely. Greece received repeated bailouts, but no one fixed the hole in the ship of Theseus. Portugal, Ireland, Greece and Spain became the pariahs of Europe, mocked with the bestial acronym PIGS. If these overspending countries on the wilder fringes of the Eurozone were just swine, who cared what happened to them? The sick pigs were treated with austerity measures. Austerity is a severe kind of virtuous discipline, so citizens were expected to agree that it was good for them. The name evoked the austerity regime of rationing after the end of the Second World War, to convince us that the situation now was equally desperate and the bitter medicine was necessary. Greece needed repeated doses of the miracle austerity drug. Sometimes they were sympathetically called painful measures. As when a doctor warns, you might feel a little discomfort before skewering you with an enormous needle. In America, meanwhile, people were talking up a new, new crisis, the spectre of another recession when the Bush tax cuts expired and spending was reduced. This was the looming fiscal cliff. It wasn't clear whether the leaky boat of the USA was going to smash into the bottom of the cliff, or whether Lady Liberty would run off the edge of the cliff, her legs pumping frantically in midair like wily coyote before she fell to her doom. European austerity had already plunged some countries into a double-dip recession, which sounds like either an extra coating of sherbet on your licorice stick, or the pornographic hobby of people who didn't get the austerity memo. The word recession itself was originally a euphemism for the word depression, but that sounded too depressing. Then, recession itself became scary. In the 1970s, the White House economist Alfred Kahn was told to stop saying recession. So he began to give speeches that warned of a looming banana. You will not laugh! You will not cry! You will learn by the numbers! I will teach you! The point of all this austerity, we were told, was to reassure the markets. Markets are sensitive and anxious things and the job of politicians and central bankers is to soothe their troubled brows to assuage their every fear. If markets were calm, the job was done. Until they got nervous again. Maybe the austerity packages really contained bottles of Valium pills for traders. Citizens could only hope that the Euro crisis would eventually be solved by someone with sufficient Euro vision. 
One day, perhaps, history would record that Europeans were saved from being driven like austere lemmings over the fiscal cliff by a surprise credit injection from Sweden's Lorene.